Uh, welcome to this marketplace session. Uh, my name is Chris Woodfield, and I'm part of the low carbon Devon team here at the University of Plymouth. Really excited to be hosting this marketplace session for the next 50 minutes. Um, we've got two amazing projects to highlight. Um, for the first 25 minutes, it's going to be Jane Brady from the Bioregional Learning Center talking about the Devon donor and donor economics and how we can apply that locally. And then after that, we've got Adam um, Williams from the West Devon District Council and sorry, West Devon Borough Council and South Ham's District Council. That is a mouthful, Adam. I don't know how you managed to say that. <laughs> um, and he's also got with uh, him Sophie Phillips from South Dartmoor Community Energy. But let's dive straight in. Um, and I'll hand over to Jane to tell you about her and to tell you about the Devon Donut. Jane, welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, just a quick introduction. So I am a director and co-founder, co-director and co-founder of the Bioregional Learning Center. Um, we're based in South Devon and um, we are building a bioregional platform, I guess one would say. Uh, essentially what we are is an action learning lab um, we are cultivating the practice of something we call bioregioning, which is really kind of it's systems thinking. It's looking at um, the uh, the holistic landscape of the bioregion, and we also are building a knowledge commons, like um, a learning center. So um, we uh, let's see, we are conveners, I guess, co-conveners of something called the Devon Donut or um, the Devon Donut Collective. And I am going to switch to my slides, I think now. Great. Am I doing the right thing here? I'm wondering. Is that good? No. All good, Jane. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. There we go. So um, I'm just going to uh, quickly click through some slides here. So um, I'm not sure if um, all of you guys are familiar with uh, Donut Economics um, and uh, the, the, the book uh, written by Kate Rayworth and the deal, um, the Donut, Action, um, Donut Economics Action Lab. But just a quick introduction. Uh, so the, the, the Donut is essentially um, a visual framework. It's a, um, it's a, a tool essentially for being able to see the social foundation and the ecological ceiling in the same picture. So it, it can give a, um, a snapshot or a selfie, um, which, which shows how a particular place or a community is doing both socially and environmentally. Um, so how the, the, oh, Devin, that's an interesting spelling mistake there, how the Devon Donut began. Um, in the uh, Regenerate Devon Summit, the um, the chat window was kind of on fire with with questions and conversations about about donut economics. Um, so we at the Bioregional Learning Center uh, decided to convene the first donut conversation, and that has subsequently grown into um, the collective, which is now over ninety people, um, and. All of those folks are very highly invested and uh, contribute quite a lot of professional time, their own time, to the effort. So we are making a people's donut for Devon. Um, uh, why this is different, I guess, is that, that Devon is made up, as, as we know, of both urban and rural uh, landscapes. Um, the the Amsterdam donut is focused very much on on a city, so we have a unique situation here because we have both urban and rural. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the work is really in response to um, policy making first and foremost. So 
policy making in terms of the UK's uh, the UK government's legally binding commitment, the Devon Carbon Plan, um, and various you know the SDGs, all of those kinds of things, but also uh, just citizens you know sensing that the that this could be a useful way of holding a sort of helicopter view, seeing everything in relation to to one another. So we started out with two questions. What do we need to measure? And would a donut be useful to people living and working here? And if so, how and to do what? So it's a pretty basic, a basic question. We decided not really to um, to take anything uh, give, as given, i.e. the indicators of the original donut. We decided to kind of explore the whole subject from scratch in terms of what we thought as citizens needed to be measured and then work up to, okay, what does that mean for indicators? What kind of, in, what kind of domains do we want? We wanted to really explore the whole territory. So we set up a co-design process. We meet uh, every two weeks, and we've done that since last October. And we call it Coffee and Donuts. It's um, everyone here is welcome to join. It's kind of an open door. Um, the Bioregional Learning Center does provide some structure around the, around the sessions. Um, but essentially, it's, it's online. It's a forum. And at, at each session, we, we kind of um, interrogate the donut a little bit, tear it apart, put it back together again, bring in experts, um, et cetera. And the process has been really uh, successful and well received. So one of the questions that we asked um, of, the, of the collective is, what do we think is the best use for the, for the Devon Donut? So the Devon Donut is, um, uh, can be used as kind of a, a comparison tool or a targeting tool. Um, the collective felt fairly strongly, very strongly actually, that, that the Devon Donut would be a great tool, a great framework to be able to um, tell narratives and use storytelling and essentially kind of light fires all over Devon in terms of, you know, waking up to the need for um, for us to find a balance between all of the domains within the within the donut. So at the moment, at least up to now, we we have a framework. We have a frame that we're working within, and we're calling that the space for revitalization, um, and that's the ring of our donut. Um, so uh, and the reason for that is because we want to see not just where we're failing, but where we can, um, where we are succeeding. And we want to be able to grow into that frame of uh, revitalization, looking towards the future. We also have domains. Um, these are slightly different to the original domains uh, um, in the original uh, donut. And that's because we have tailored them to Devon. So for example, um, rather than choose uh, um, a domain called um, ocean acidification, we've chosen to call our domain coast and marine health. Um, that's just one example. They're, by and large, they're, they're fairly similar to the original domains, but we've made some changes. And we're also really interested in the cross-cutting themes. So things like uh, COVID-19 or care or tourism or agriculture, these are cross-cutting themes that work across the domains. We've also, um, at this point, developed what we're calling contextualized indicators. So rather than using the given indicators in the original donut, we've created, um, or we are in the process of creating at least, um, some indicators that we feel, when you see them all together, gives you a really good sense of how Devon is doing. Um, so that they're, they're quite, they're much more informal. They are, um, you can see three examples here that we're we're kind of working with at the moment. So the number of fishing vessels, the incidence of access to open-ended, low-cost mental health support, frequency of moments when young people in Devon experience guided interaction with nature. So you can you can you can imagine that with 22 of those indicators for all the domains, you would get a really good sense. I think if um, if we could if we could create baselines or ways of ways of um, investigating each of those. 
So the way that we're looking at it is within each indicator, we have set up what we're calling twin thresholds. So these are sort of two sides of the same coin. We've got citizen-led innovation and we've got policy change. And the reason is because um, community groups, citizens tend to have a different way of working to policymakers. They're both valid and we need both of those to, to kind of work together. So for each um, each of those two, two sides of the coin, we've got boundaries and current values and trend. Now, I don't know if we, I'm not sure I have time to get into that. If we do, I'll come back to it. Um, so I will move on. Um, so this is our this is our working Devon donut. So you can see here we've got around the outside the uh, the domains for the ecological ceiling, and on the inside we've got the domains for the social foundation. And this next slide I think sort of really epitomizes or shows what we are working towards. So the donut on the left, you can see there's a much more red, we're in trouble in lots of different areas. Um, if we can all work together, and if we can if we can change that, you can see how the donut over time can, um, can show essentially less red, more green. So that area in the middle, uh, the space for revitalization becomes, um, becomes activated. So that's, that's kind of, Mm, a, a bit of a diagram, diagrammatic overview of um, of how the donut can can work for Devon over time. So essentially, it's it's one frame. It's different ways of working, and potentially we could uh, we could end up with a Devon wide box of donuts. Um, we're exploring everything from individual donuts to neighbourhood donuts to city donuts. Um, all within the context of, of uh, all within a bi-regional or a, um, a landscape scale context of Devon. And the whole thing, as I said, is a work in progress. Everyone is welcome to, to join in. We have a session on Monday where we're gonna be looking at income and work, which is one of the, uh, one of the domains. Uh, we've also got upcoming food. We've got to focus on food. We've got to focus on health and well-being and care. Um, and essentially, the bioregional um, learning center is just, we're just rolling with it. We're, we're, we, we've um, initiated it and uh, it gets more and more exciting. The more and more people who join in and bring, it, bring in their expertise. So that's, that's my little slideshow. Thanks, Jane. Um, thanks for that overview of, of the Devon Donut. Um, it sounds really interesting, and I've been along to some of your your chats, which have been really great to be a part of. Um, if you've got any questions for Jane, we've got some time now, uh, about 10 minutes, to have a conversation. So if you've got any questions, do put them in the chat. There are some coming through, so that's great. Um, don't know if you can see those as well, Jane. We could start off with the top one there uh, from Lucy, which is around collecting data on the on the indicators, which is always going to be a challenge, but I know you're looking at that. Um, could, could you expand on that? Yeah, sure. So, yes, I mean, we know that we've set ourselves a big challenge there, and um, it's not that we are ignoring available data. The way we see it is that the, the indicators are linked to scenarios, and the scenarios help us think about the indicators. But behind that, um, I can imagine, you know, there's there's a um, a stack of, of 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 data that can support that indicator. Um, we also know that there's going to be a lot of gaps, you know, because um, most donuts, because they rely on available data, um, uh, they have that they have that data, you know, um, to back up the indicator. But we know that. We, we won't have that in, in many situations. So this is a huge opportunity for, uh, for the community and um, in collaboration with, with academia and with experts to, to locate the things that we think are important and we don't have data for and work towards getting it. Yeah. So an example of that, for example, would be um, citizen science. So we've got more and more people now 
regular citizens out there testing the water in our rivers. So there are, you know, there are a growing number of things that citizens can do so that we can begin to collect the data that we that we want. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, the key to that, isn't it, is collaboration. So it's not duplicating what's already out there, but it's it's trying to find it's trying to um, complement existing data collection. Um, exactly. Which is a key to the whole donor, isn't it? That notion of collaboration. Um, and that sort of leads on to well, what Adam's going to be talking about shortly, um, but also there's a question from from Uta around local authorities being involved in the collective or councils, yes. and that's I believe that's definitely the case. But do you want to expand on that? Yeah, sure. So we have we have a number of councillors and officers who are part of the collective, um, and interestingly, uh, recently we've had a lot more a lot more interest from from councillors, North Devon, West Devon. Um, and we essentially our process is to invite them in, get a sense for what we do, um, and you know, at, at some point, I guess um, the the sort of the way we see it anyway is that is that there'll be some sort of a hopefully a bit of a convergence. So um, in the meantime, we are just we're just pushing ahead, and you know, we see this as a citizen-led effort, and we're working towards some kind of a donut assembly or something in the fall in the autumn um but the the door is very much open and we have connections into uh to south hams and to devon county council and um so on and so forth we don't have we're not party to the inner workings so we don't really know you know if if um, one council is favoring sdgs as a tool or make creating their own decision wheel Etc. But we have we've created this 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 open invitation and a really good process and a way of um, pairing up, you know, um, and giving giving equal um, honoring, I guess, both processes, both citizen and policymakers. So we're doing we're doing all we can on that front. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds great. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's such an important point, isn't it? And I think. Maybe there's something in there about ownership as well. Like, I'm not sure. I mean, you mentioned at the start by regional learning centers approach of sort of shared responsibility or shared ownership and trying to bring everyone together to feel like they can take ownership of particular aspects. So it sounds like that's that really is the approach. And I think that's the approach we need. Um, but there's a question here about public engagement. Um, and you know, people, if they haven't heard of Crate Warehouse work um, on donor economics, how much public engagement have you had? Um, I know it's difficult, like everyone in the past twelve months, with not being able to do live events and stuff. But um, yeah. I know you've been doing stuff online and plan to do stuff in the future. Yeah. So, so our process is very has been very much about sort of organically widening the circle. Right, so uh, we started out with with four people. Now, it's, like I said, we're sort of over over ninety. And from the beginning, we've held these three kind of um, strands of work. So there's there's kind of planning, um, there's there's doing the work, you know, thinking into the indicators, and then there's sharing. And the 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 sharing side um, it kind of sits along alongside everything we're doing. I mentioned that we're planning uh, a donut assembly, citizen, citizen, I forget what we're calling it now, a citizen donut assembly maybe um, in, the, in the fall. Uh, we've also um, got ideas for what we're calling a donut cafe, which again is, is kind of a, a, it's a drop in forum, but it's more like for, we'd have to promote it. Um, I mean, all of this effort has been pro bono. So uh, we would promote the, the donut cafe um, and that could be for for anybody who's who's interested um, to learn more about about what it is, etc. We've talked about um, donut shops, which would be an awesome way to re, re revitalize our high streets. Um, so we have plenty of you know plenty of ideas. We're just at the moment we're just trying to kind of understand for ourselves and get to grips with what really is the difference between the Devon donut and the original donut and. And we're getting there. We have a process that we can that we feel is working, that gets you know uh, supported by the collective. Um, so you know, 
we we're working into that space yeah awesome yeah it sounds great it really reminds me of the the sort of work of um you lab and sort of leading from the emerging future and the sort of that co precipitation and co-design uh which is often takes more time and is more challenging but is much more rewarding as well i don't know if you've you found that in terms of your process uh absolutely i mean i'm i'm a designer by training so so the whole idea of co-design um is is sort of implicit really in in design work so um it's absolutely much more uh, much more lively um, than any other any other way of, of working. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that sounds great. Yeah, we've got uh, a few more questions around other examples. Um, so, do you know any other countries who have this collective? You mentioned the Amsterdam donut at that sort of city scale. Yeah. Um, do you know any other examples, whether they're local or regional? I, I I do absolutely. So um, Cornwall, uh, Cornwall Council, they have uh, sort of a version of the donut which is called the the Cornwall um, Decision Wheel, and that's something that they're using to make decisions within the, the council environment. Um, alongside that, there's the Cornwall uh, Donut Collective, and that's headed up really by Amanda Brookman and Peter Lafort. Um, and the good news there is that we've recently started conversations between the Devon and the Cornwall Donuts to pool our knowledge because we are do we're each going about it in a slightly different way. Ours is more of a sort of a measured method and a process and, and theirs has been more focused on the sharing part of it, like having donut hacks and so on and so forth. So I'm really excited that those two energies are coming together. Um, I was also recently on a panel, um, there's, a, there's a Slack channel for donut groups worldwide. I was also on a panel alongside Amsterdam, uh, Ireland and Melbourne. Um, so uh, on the DEAL website, the Donut Economics Action Lab website, I think they have over 5,000 members um, now. Most of them are interested individuals, but um, there are also some, some specific donut groups um, and some are further along than others, like Amsterdam um, is really far along, but they had, you know, initial support from the city, um, from the government to, to sort of weave it in and, and fund it. Um, ours is much more of a grassroots, uh, a grassroots activity. But yeah, there's all kinds of all kinds of donut um, activity and. and I know that to, together, collaboratively, we're thinking, let's, you know, let's share that kind of worldwide donut activity. So there's some, there's a few things afoot on that front. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, I think we're going to have to sort of wrap up there and move on to the next, uh, to Adam and Sophie. But thank you so much. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of comments in there about how do we get in touch, um, whether we can, whether people can join the collective. Um, so you can check out Devon, the Devon Donor through the Bioregional Learning Centre. I think you have oh, your actually, own website as well, don't you? Actually, we so we have a website um, which is uh, devondonut.org, and on there you can see um, the slideshow which tracks our progress. There's also just to, to point you towards an animation. It's a three-minute animation on the website, which is really good for just sort of explaining. Um, everything in three minutes um, but everybody's welcome to the to the collective so either contact us through the website or um, through my uh, through my email totally fine yeah awesome okay so look forward to uh, people checking out that three minute video maybe we could just finish Jane with three words from you to sum up the Devon donut Three words, wow, okay. Um, it's gotta be around vitality, energy, um, and emerging, something like that. Awesome, that sounds great. Um, thank you for that, and thanks for your time. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and your weekend. I'd now love to bring on uh, Adam, Adam Williams. Um, to kick us off 
um, about community. This really feeds in well with what we've just been discussing about collaboration. So Adam's going to be sharing about community and local authority um, collaborations and partnerships around climate action. So over to you, Adam. Thanks, Russ. Right. Um, so yeah, firstly, I'm delighted to be here. I'm a born and bred Plymouthian, uh, big fan of the Sustainable Earth Institute, especially this annual conference, having attended last time in person in 2016. Um, I found it to be incredibly enlightening and insightful, so it's wonderful to be here as a speaker. Um, so by way of introduction, um, I'm the Climate Change Specialist at South Hams and West Devon Council. Um, responsible for coordinating both councils' climate emergency response. Um, I'm actually an urban and rural planning graduate and having studied for my master's here at Plymouth University. I started this role last year, but my background has largely been spent in uh, urban and rural planning, specifically policy, evidence-based development and community engagement. And I'm also joined by Sophie Phillips, who kindly agreed to, to join me, and she's one of our um, community forum members. So since declaring a climate emergency, the councils have committed to reducing operational emissions to net zero by 2030 and helping to reduce the district emissions to net zero by 2050 at the latest, emphasising that reducing those district emissions and emissions in the borough will need to be a concerted effort. And we're also seeking to improve the biodiversity of our own green and wooded public space by 10%. And since declaration, this has translated into three main areas of focus, really. Um, signing up and supporting the Devon Climate Emergency and the production of the Devon Carbon Plan, which will then, of course, feed into relevant actions to our own action plan. Um, reducing our operation emissions to net zero by 2030. And supporting the districts and the borough to net zero by 2050 by engaging and supporting residents, businesses and partner organisations to help achieve these aims. And in terms of our adopted strategy, the climate emergency work is beginning to be underpinned by a strategic, a changing strategic context within the council. Uh, so I mean, since, since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, this has presented um, uh, quite a few unique opportunities for a bit of a reset, taking learnings and positives such as more remote working, increased connection with nature through explore from your door type activities. Um, but also it's, it's given us a chance to kind of consider just how important our communities are and just how, how they've all responded admirably to the pandemic doing wonderful work on the ground. So just to give a bit of a flavour about what we've been doing over the past year, um, I mean, as, as local authorities, we don't have all the answers or all the solutions, but collaboration and partnership and taking action on some of those low hanging fruits, such as EV charging and housing retrofit features quite heavily. Um, and also we're starting to embed the climate emergency across our organisation through carbon literacy training as well. Um, but I'm here to speak specifically about our community and biodiversity forum. So there's a huge challenge around climate action about what we can do locally in a solutions and action focused way. Our main hope for the work with our community forum over time is that making use of different expertise and experiences will we all hold will ultimately lead to more sustainable and regenerative ways of doing things together. Now, as, as a council, we only have small, um, small control over a small proportion of the um, total emissions in our area, um, around 1.4% in both areas. Um, but, but we also have influence outside of our direct operation. I mean, the, the Climate Change Committee estimates that local authorities have some degree of influence over um, roughly a third of emissions in, in their areas, whereas around two thirds of greenhouse gas emissions are related to household consumption, according to climate outreach. And it's because of this we feel our most potent role will be how we work within a leadership landscape to enable, influence, communicate and develop action together that will have the biggest reach and impact across our areas. Um, therefore, strong partnerships and collaboration across the region will ensure we maximise our effectiveness, sharing expertise, knowledge and best practice to strengthen our credibility of our messages and am amplify our reach. So we very much see ourselves as a facilitator and a partner and that's where our community forum comes in. So why a community forum? The idea of setting up a community forum first came about after our consultation on our draft climate change action plan at South Hounds back in March last year. Um, following the consultation, we invited a few of those who commented to meet with officers and some councillors 
Um, we, we discussed climate action more generally and what our role as a council should be. But it was clear from the comments made during that meeting that people really wanted to work with us and collaborate on the work we were doing. So as after this, we thought about setting up a community forum and it would be a good way to build networks and create a two way flow of ideas and action. Um, sort of flipping community engagement on its head a little bit um, from a pri primarily front loaded activity to an ongoing one. And it was because of this, we decided to keep our action plan as an organic piece of work to capture new ideas through exchange and learning, sharing concerns, highlighting areas for improvement. We felt we needed a bit of a sounding board to do this, um, but we also wanted to create a relaxed and open space to discuss these issues. So some of the, these are some of the questions we kind of asked ourselves when, set, when setting out creating the forum. Um, we already knew what the purpose was from early discussions after our consultation. Um, uh, but to create a relaxed and open space, we thought it would be necessary to limit the number of members. Um, but equally, this has a strength because having a fixed membership, you, relationships can be built and people who otherwise feel deterred from talking in large, larger groups might be for more feel to contribute and take part. Um, we felt an expression of interest survey would help us achieve this. Um, but designing this task was something we had to get right. Um, to ask the right questions, but also come up with a selection process and a methodology that would enable good representation of those members. So we, we know the areas where there are very active community groups, but there are some areas where we didn't. So achieving a good geographical split was our first aim, and this was something councillors were also really keen to encourage. Uh, we wanted to make sure to the best of our ability that age groups were properly represented. Um, so this was our second primary aim. We knew from our consultation and prior engagement activity that the, the active participants tended to skew heavier towards the older age groups. Um, and after setting out these two primary objectives, we knew we wanted organic networks and relationships to develop. Um, so creating a representative community forum could bring already active groups together and individuals. So our series of questions asked whether a person was a member of community group or community interest, interest company or a town and parish council. Um, these, these sorts of groups are already really well connected to activity happening in their area. So we wanted to make sure that people represented these groups were well represented. Um, and these formed our second secondary aims. And this is where we thought the best balance would lie to to help design our survey. Um, I mean, you'd probably be thinking about what, what about hard to reach groups or those not engaged in climate action. This is always a really hard nut to crack. But we had to think clearly about what the purpose of the forum is. Is it something to educate? Um, and engage, or is it to help facilitate, encourage, and incubate ideas? Um, and this is, we decided to go with, with this option. And it was clear from our earlier consultation activity, there's a lot of energy and passion out there. And there was a desire among the team and councillors to tap into this. So our expression of interest uh, survey was designed, um, promoted on social media and through our e-bulletins, which is also sent to town and parish council. So it's mostly a digital exercise. Um, and the survey was open for about four weeks and the selection period took about two to three weeks afterwards. Um, our surveys generated nearly 90 responses in South Hams and about 30 in West Devon. Um, selection was definitely a challenge as the level of interest was strong. Every one we heard from had equal claim to, or, to a space on the forum, but we had to be clear about our primary aims and our secondary aims. We grouped people into primary and secondary ca categories to help the background split a bit more. Um, so, for instance, someone might sit on a parish council, but also be a member of a community group or have some level of expertise. Um, whereas someone might have worked for an organisation of some kind, but have a particular interest as well. And there were two questions in the survey that really helped this. And at the end, we asked specifically if they had an area of expertise or just generally if there's any other information they wanted to give us that they felt was relevant to, to the forum. Um, and it was that latter question where we were found that people found people that weren't all that well connected, but had a strong passion for tackling climate change or had particular expertise in certain areas. Um, so we felt it important to include some of these people and some of those people tend to be our younger applicants as well. Um, in terms of geography, uh, here's an example from the West Devon selection. Uh, there was a fairly equal spread across the borough. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but the orange coloured dots are those who were not selected across the borough. Um, the borough was roughly split into um, zones based on the respondees location of all the answers we got from the survey. Um, so I mean, it, it wasn't an, an exact science in, in, in any way, um, but we tried to take account of the level of response generated by the survey. 
um, under or over selecting a particular geography, for instance, had impacts on other metrics. So we tried to strike a balance across all the metrics we set to the best we could. Um, remembering the main purpose of the forum is to share ideas and action across the borough and the district to capture voices of different interested people. For our first meeting of South Hams, we agreed the terms of reference and had, had an open discussion around housing retrofit because at the time we secured funding under the Green Homes Grant Scheme, but we were encountering problems with finding leads and getting installs booked in. Um, we asked the forum from some questions around what the council's role is and what the biggest challenges around tackling residential emissions are, um, and awareness and support and skills were, were highlighted issues. And since then, it's, it's become one of our priorities to try and build a more local supply chain of installers, and it has fed into to bids we've made under the Community Renewal Fund, for instance. Um, in terms of the future, um, it, it's, it's early days of the forum. It was set up late last year in South Hams and this year in West Devon, um, but we hope it continues to become a place for ongoing collaborative work. Um, create mechanisms for um, members to share information outside of meetings um, and for, for even for us to seek feedback and process reviews, um, for instance, um, and bring along guest speakers who have particular areas of expertise so they can plug into people that we have connections with um, and to report updates um, that we're doing to the forum that they can then reach out to their groups and feed in suggestions from the forum into our um, evolving climate and biodiversity action plan. Um, I'm going to pass over to Sophie now, who's got a few slides of herself. Hi, Sophie. I'm not sure we can hear you. Um, have you got your microphone on? I don't know if we can have some technical support. OK, can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah, that's awesome. Great. Um, OK. So, um, yes, uh, thanks. Thanks for um, inviting me uh, onto the forum. I'm glad to be part of the forum. Um, I'm uh, one of the directors of South Dartmoor Community Energy. We're a community energy group based in Ivybridge and we do work across the whole of the South Hams. And quite a lot of our projects are and um, we do already work with the with South Hams already for our energy efficiency and our, our housing projects as well. So it was great to kind of um, continue that relationship by being part of the forum. So um, just a quick bit about us. We're a not-for-profit group. We've been going since 2016. Our key aims are about uh, mitigating climate change and alleviating fuel poverty. So um, it's really, what we do is really in alignment with, with the aims of the forum. Uh, so Adam asked me, uh, why, why did we want to be part of it? And I was thinking, I think the main reason is that I wanted to make sure that community energy was represented as part of the, the, the South Hams Climate um, and Biodiversity Forum because we're community energy across the whole of the UK has a really important role to play in, in a just, just transition um, because not only can we actually build more renewable energy systems but we are part of bringing communities with us and we work with people on the ground um, and yeah we, we're kind of really important part of the, the response to, to climate change. But I was really interested in making new connections as well. And uh, although we actually, it was really nice to see a lot of familiar faces on the forum, but there was a lot of um, people that I'd never met before as well. So it's really great to, to build those new connections and new links. And um, I think everybody on the forum is really hopeful that we can have new partnerships and develop projects together as well. Um, but something that I've been thinking more recently as that we can all do as members of the forum is uh, kind of give add weight to Adam's voice. So if he's got uh, to propose policies or make difficult decisions within the council, then we we can back him because we all want to see these big impactful changes. Um, so that's where I'd like to see it going, really, to, to, to kind of having more of an impact. And I think if we all work together, then we can um, definitely make make that happen. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Sophie. Um, I wonder if we could bring Adam and Sophie back on. Um, 
and see if there's any if you've got any questions for either adam or sophie do put them in the chat and we can have a look and see if anything comes through um so yeah do put those in the chat but maybe um i could kick us off adam what what do you think um got a few questions but start off with what do you think are the sort of like the main challenge in, in what you're working on right now with regards to the forum um in, in terms of uh, it's the, the the main challenge at the moment is trying to get tangible action done but to be able to do that we need to build those relationships first and it's a bit of a slow burn because i think there was an expectation for things to happen quite quickly and obviously dealing with climate emergency we just do, do need things to happen very quickly um but it is kind of trying to tease out what those actions are and what we can do and what how that feeds into our emerging action plan but as the the south hams forum in particular that's that's further along and there's there are starting uh, things that are coming out now so i mean we had um we had um co-cars come along to the last one and we're going to be working on a bit of a joint work in terms of doing a district-wide and borough-wide survey um that we can work on together and then the community forum members can help spread that word so we can get the most data out of that survey and that would be valuable for co-cars as well and also for us yeah yeah i guess the pace of change is um is a difficult one. I think uh, I find it frustrating as well, working in a large organization like a university about trying to facilitate that change quick enough. Mm. I don't know if that's why, for me, I think one of the great things about listening to you two talk is that maybe um, community groups and, and people like yourself, Sophie, have a sort of, are able to put that into action a bit more quickly rather than go through the processes that councils might have. Have you found that? Exactly, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, we're quite a small organisation and we're super flexible. So any project that is meets our aims, we can just, well, we've, man, we've managed to keep going since 2016. Part-time jobs and secured lots of grants. So uh, we've got some great projects and uh, it's, we're kind of, yeah, we'd like to bring, it, bring in more, but we, we can be more flexible, definitely. <laughs> Hope that can benefit the council as well. Mm -hmm. And equally we can lend our support as well in terms of our kind of what we do as a council in terms of our leadership position so we can add weight to some of the work they're wanting to do on the ground and obviously we've we've also um set up a crowd funder as well very recently so there's opportunities for the communities to tap into funding at south Hams in particular yeah yeah exactly okay cool um we have had one question come through from robert um around engaging with with other key stakeholders. Um, so like us, for example, Low Carbon Devon or the Devon Donut. I believe you're part of the Devon Donut Collective as well. Mm -hmm. um, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so there is so there is that connection going on. Um, I think like everything it's having, creating the space, isn't it, to have those connections is, is probably one of the main challenges. But I think those conversations are definitely happening. Yeah, they are. Um, we've got another question come through from Lucy. How are you measuring your impact progress? I mean, that's a big question. I don't know if that's in relation to anything in particular or any of you could pick up on that. I don't know if it's directed at Sophie maybe or and or Adam. I mean, in, in terms of the forum, um, we take key actions from every meeting and we report on those. So we capture what those key actions are and we do a six monthly update on our action plan to our executive and our overview and scrutiny committees. And um, the, the the key actions from those meetings are appended to that report. Um, but as the action plan starts to evolve and more kind of suggestions and work comes out of the community forum that feeds into our action plan. And if we take those into the action plan, then they will be reported in a version, a new version of the action plan. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, have you got anything to add to that, Sophie? Um, around measuring impact or progress? I'm not sure. It's a quite a vague question, but <laughs> do you? <laughs> well, we measure, um, in terms of a lot of the, a lot of our um, impact is 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 it's kind of subjective and it's about the social benefits which are very difficult to to quantify. But we I mean we know how much energy that we've saved people and money that we've saved people through our fuel poverty projects. Um, so that that's obviously quite measurable. We've got um, 
we've got a cool project called Net Zero Heroes, which is about reducing carbon footprints. So that's that's kind of ongoing at the moment, and we're working to help um, to reach people to encourage them to do their carbon footprint and make a meaningful reduction. Uh, so at the end of the three month period, we're hoping to see um, to, to have some results to, on that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's kind of the, the main way we're measuring it. Okay, awesome. Um, thank you. There's, I don't know if you've seen that, Adam. There's a there's a question coming from Jen um, around the targets, and I think this has been talked about across Devon as well. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a Devon Climate Partnership um, or Devon Climate Emergency, and we were in some discussions about should the target be 2030 or should it be 2050. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So the question is around, sh shouldn't the targets be sooner? I think there's a balance there, isn't there, between the sort of ambition and re realisticness. I, I'm verging on the, yes, it should be sooner for me. Um, we need to be more ambitious, but but what are your thoughts on that and your conversations with your colleagues within the council? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the, 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 the area, um, emission target to to get get to zero by twenty fifty. That's a date that we took because we signed up to the Devon Climate Emergency. Um, so our targets sit in line with that. And I know there are discussions going on about kind of what, what what's going to happen with that date because um, goalposts are moving all the time, and there there is a pressing need to try and bring that date forward. But that's sort of something that's happening with the with the Devon um, uh, Climate Emergency Group and our discussions with them. Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the challenge, isn't it? In some ways, it doesn't. I mean, it does matter what the date is, but I think the emphasis is actually we just need to take action now, yeah. um, and that needs to be a combination of sort of short term action combined with longer term action. Um, and I think maybe that goes on to something about resources. I don't know. Yeah, you're you're the climate change person within your your council. Is it? How big is your team? Is it just you? Yeah, it's just me. I'm split between two authorities. So as you can imagine, it's, it's quite a big brief uh, for two authorities and, and the time I've got to spend on that, which is why kind of doing a, a collaborative and partnership arrangement is, is the best thing we can do right now. And um, I know the, the, the when the Climate Change Committee reported its um, the, the sixth, sixth carbon budget last year, they did write a report specifically about local authorities for the first time and the, 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 the role they have to play in the government meeting its net zero targets. And the climate, uh, the, the climate Change Committee did make a load of recommendations to government about local authority position and the resourcing they need to help meet those aims. And whether the government decide to take those recommendations on is, is another matter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. OK, cool. Well, um, we're coming up to the end and we are moving straight into the sessions after this, um, the final sort of action workshops. So maybe we could just have a quick summary from from Adam and Sophie around um, what are the maybe what are the benefits that you've seen from this partnership um, and maybe just summarizing though in, in a few keywords maybe Adam start with you okay um, I mean I'd be a problem on the speak for Sophie but in terms of how we see it we we feel like there's a bit more of an understanding between the authority and the community at the moment um, and having that space where we can talk to each other regularly rather than us doing tokenistic engagement exercise and asking questions that start the process and leaving it um I, th I think it's been quite valuable so far yeah thanks adam well what about you sophie i guess we're just hoping for um yeah more more partnership projects because the that we can support each other because like where um adam's lacking in resources and we've got stuff that we can do and vice versa so that we can just match up what we want to do because we've all got the same aim haven't we we all want to reduce carbon emissions um aim for it awesome okay well thank you very much uh thanks for joining us this afternoon really interesting and, and like jane beforehand i'm sure adam and sophie would 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 love to connect further and you can contact them uh through their projects or you can find them on the spot me platform um, through the people tab or the speakers tab if you've got any further questions uh, but again just yeah re reiterate my thanks to to everyone for joining as well and to Jane to, to Adam and to Sophie um, and 
enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, we've got a few sessions left and have a lovely weekend. But yeah, bye for now and thanks again.